This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create morph target layers inside of ZBrush? So here I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have some sample scan data loaded in from 1024. And I've taken this scan data, and I've just chopped off the arm of the model. So I just have a mesh like so. Now this mesh is pretty high poly, so we're up to 2.3 million points over there. And let's say I'm working on a project, and the project requires the actor to transform into a sort of creature. So using ZBrush, I can come through and use this morph target layer system to kind of visualize this stuff to show the art director or the creative director to kind of get a look and feel of how this may look when it's actually done with prosthetics or other traditional methods. So I have the scan data here, and the first thing I want to do is I just want to come over to the layer palette over here and I want to just create a new layer. Now when I create a new layer, this is going to do a non-destructive process to my model. So I can come through and sculpt on this model now, and then if I don't like those changes, I can delete the layer or set this layer to zero to show or hide those things I just sculpted. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to mangle this uh, scan data here and just turn it into some sort of quick creature. So I have a custom brush I'm going to come over here and select, and this is just a spikes brush. So it's just using the standard brush, and I have an alpha loaded onto that brush with a drag rectangle stroke. So if I come across my model now and simply click and drag, I'm going to start generating spikes like this. So I'm just going to come through and apply some spikes to the model here, to just make it some sort of creature-ish kind of effect. And then maybe I'm going to come through and apply some of these to his forms as well. So just making a rough uh, kind of concept for how this character would look with these spikes or transforming into some sort of creature. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna elongate some of his fingernails as well. So I'm just gonna come through and apply masking to the fingernails. Come through and holding control and just applying some masking to these areas. And once again, this is all being stored on this layer. So I can come through and manipulate this and not worry about distorting my original model here. Now I'm just gonna flip the mask by holding control and clicking off the model. And then I'm gonna select the move brush. And I'm gonna come through now and just move these fingernails a little bit. So just making them a little bit nice and daggery here. So just pulling these out. And I'm just affecting the original topology here to kind of deform or distort this using morph layers uh, inside a ZBrush here. And come through and do that. And then let's go in with the damn standard brush and let's switch this to add. And now I'm going to kind of dig into these nails a little bit too. So just roughen them up a little bit. Now you'd want to spend a little more time on this than I'm doing in this video here, but it gets the effect across. And then let's add some rough skin effects as well. So I'm going to come and grab, say, the elastic or let's grab. The flakes brush, I'm just gonna grab that, and I'm gonna turn off RGB on this brush, and I'm gonna come through and just add some flakes around these uh, spikes as well. So just roughing up the surface skin there. So just quick little things like so. And so you could come through and see how you can manipulate this model to generate any sort of different effects you want. Now, after I have this applied, I can also come through and apply some discoloring or different colors to this mesh as well. So I'm gonna come over here and select the standard brush again, and I'm gonna change this to the drag rectangle option here. And I have some textures loaded in. So these are just some pictures of different walls. And so I'm gonna grab this one here, and then maybe set the alpha to this alpha. And I'm gonna drag those out with RGB on and Z add off. And you can see I can come through and start colorizing this as well to kind of get a different kind of effect or look to this. And if you change your intensity here, you can blend it in with that skin color as well. Let me I'll apply a, another texture too to get some different colorization or color values into the model. So really, really quick kind of process here. So you can use any of the brushes inside a ZBrush to distort your model. You just wanna make sure you don't DynaMesh or ZRemesh the mesh because the vertices need to stay the same in order for the morph layers to work correctly. So there we have the transformed version of the uh, model here. So I took that scan data and transformed it. 
I have some interesting stuff on the back end too, little happy accidents there. Now I can just render this out and show the art director, the creative director, kind of the look on this. If this is too much or I need to tailor it back, I can come over here and even adjust this slider and you can end up getting a transformed look of the model as well. So, ah, those spikes are too big. Can you scale it back some? I can come through here and just with that slider there, get the different effect now with a little bit less of that intensity and even just kind of show how the transformation may happen as well using those more. And this is all done by just creating a new layer here inside of ZBrush and then simply sculpting on it. So that is how you can use the layers inside of ZBrush to create morph targets, then get different effects or visualize different things for projects. So I hope that helps. If you have any other additional questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.